Here's standard landing gear, brand new. Comes with uh, four screws, uh, two uh, strut skirts, and uh, the wheels are already attached. Uh, I don't like these wheels, they're awfully small. I fly in a grass field, so I prefer a bigger wheel. So what I use is the Dave Brown Light Flight wheels. These are two and a half inch. And what I really like about these is, uh, first of all, they're very lightweight, and they fit um, on the uh, on the axle width-wise perfectly. You don't have to grind the hub away at all. I know there's other wheels out there where you have to uh, grind these away to, f to make them fit. These fit on and leaves enough room for the tip, uh, the the, the uh, threads to stick out for you to put on a uh, a, a nut. I use the uh, uh, 440 uh, lock nut. The only problem with these is is they're loose on the axle. And what I do, and I'll show you here in a second, is, is I just use shrink tube. I'll put it over the axle, shrink it down, then I'll put on another one and shrink it down. I'll keep adding shrink tube until this fits nice and snug. And then I'll go ahead and screw it down with the 440 and uh, these are to be done. Went ahead, I have a couple pieces of uh, shrink tube here and uh, all I do, slip it over the axle, take your lighter and shrink it down to the axle size. Then you'll take your second piece, should just fit right over top of that. Shrink that one down. And that should be enough to uh, that should be enough to take up whatever excess slop is in uh, the difference in diameter between the axle and the uh, hub. Then the wheel should just slip right on, which it does. And now it's now there's no play. Well, there's a tiny little bit of play, but that's to be expected. You don't want it so tight that it'll bind up. And then uh, it's just a matter of uh, getting yourself a 440 nut and tightening it down. Here's a uh, here's our 440, and it's just a, sta a steel lock nut. It's just a matter of tightening this down. And that wheel's done. It's just that simple. I've heard of people trying to epoxy or use brass bushings. Uh, the shrink tube works great. Takes up all that excess slop. And uh, it, uh, it, if for some reason it starts to uh, bind on you a little bit, just use a little bit of that oil that I showed you earlier, which is um, it's a Labelle 107 um, medium uh, medium weight multi-purpose plastic compatible. Whatever you do, don't use petroleum based. It'll it'll end up destroying your plastic. But that's all I do for the wheels. Next, we'll do the uh, the uh, strut skirts. Before I uh, mount the landing gear, I try and pre-bend. The, uh, the struts a little bit. I know you can't see it, but what I like to do is I like to bend it, uh, bend them forward a little bit so the wheels are towed in towards the front of the plane. Uh, I find that when they're straight and you come in for a landing, the gear wants to flex back a little bit, which makes the wheels towed out and it'll slow the, you know, it'll, uh, you run a chance of having the plane nose over if they get too towed out. So I like to pre-bend mine so they're towed in a little bit and uh, the final adjustment in the toe end will be done with the, uh, the strut skirts because they'll only allow the, uh, the struts to go forward only so far and I'll show you that. But go ahead and pre-bend your, uh, your uh, wheels first and then we'll go and mount it in the plane, put on the strut skirts and show you how I modify that. Before I mount the uh, strut skirts to the plane, I do a modification to them. I, uh, I cut some of the material away from the back of the, uh, of the strut, uh, the uh, skirt, 
This is one that hasn't been modified, and this is one that has, and you can see how much material I removed from it if I were to place them together, and I don't know how well this will show up because they're white, but I've cut material off the back side of the skirt, and what happens, what I have found is, um, with uh, the modica modification that I do is, when the plane comes in for a landing, and you have a skirt that hasn't been modified, and you hit kind of hard, the wheel will push back, which will flex this material back, and it digs into the side of the wheel, and it, it acts like a brake. It'll freeze the wheel up, causes the plane to nose over. So what I do is I cut this material away, and it can flex all at once, but it'll never touch the wheel. And uh, you'll see what I mean by uh, flexing because when we, we use this skirt as part of strengthening the landing gear. Uh, the way it originally comes is you use just a couple rubber bands that go around the skirt and around the, uh, the axle. And that way it allows the, uh, the axle of the, uh, the wheel to move uh, forward and aft. And, but it doesn't, doesn't add any strength to the landing gear, so it seemed like every time you'd land, um, you were constantly having to rebend the uh, landing gear. With the modification that I'm going to show you, um, this, the uh, skirt and the landing gear axle and strut become one piece, and you use the flexibility of this, this plastic to allow the landing gear to flex, but you also use the rigidity of the plastic to keep it in place. And only after a hard landing do I have to straighten the landing gear out. But on, on standard landings, like on a grass field, uh, the landing gear is fine. Went ahead and mounted the uh, skirts onto the uh, fuselage. And what we're going to do is we're going to use upholstery thread and we're going to tie this axle landing gear to the, uh, to the wheel skirt to the uh, strut skirt and I went ahead and made one hole and I, I know you won't be able to see it but where the rubber band, where the cutout is for the rubber band I laid the, uh, the landing gear in that there's a little groove there and right behind that I drilled a tiny little hole with my finger drill right here and what we'll do is uh, I use uh, upholstery thread, heavy duty upholstery thread <clears throat> And what we'll do is we'll tie this, uh, this strut skirt to the strut, and then we'll go back and I'll drill two more holes another inch up from that, and we'll tie that into place. And then I'll use some quick set CA glue just to permanently adhere the thread so it doesn't come untied. And uh, that's all I do for uh, strengthening the, uh, the landing gear. You know, I've read a lot on the forums about how guys are taking and putting a piece of plywood in here and buying heavier uh, duty uh, landing gear. And I, you can do that, but it, it no longer becomes stock. You throw the uh, weight of the plane off. It's excess weight that you don't need. I find this landing gear to be very robust. Uh, there's a reason why it's as flimsy as it, as it is, is because um, you're just dealing with foam. And before we made the modification to the battery box with the pieces of wood in here, uh, you can easily rip your battery box out. You can just rip the foam right out. What I found is, is once you put these pieces of wood in here, screw this down, you no longer rely on the foam in there to hold the battery box and all this in, the landing gear. Uh, it all now has transferred to these pieces of wood and makes it much more robust. So. What I like about leaving this is, is it's stock gear, and yeah, I've been flying all summer long. I have yet to rip out the landing gear. On hard landings, it'll flex the, uh, the landing gear back, and it'll bend it, and it's just a matter of removing two screws once you get this all tied down and just bending it forward again. But I've never had it where it's bent it all the way back. Or When I first started flying before I did this modification, every time I landed, the landing gear was bent way out of whack. Now every time I fly, unless I come in for a hard landing, it doesn't it doesn't face the landing gear at all. And we don't change the weight of the plane, and it still looks stock. So I'll go ahead, drill the other holes, tie this down, and I'll show you what it looks like when we're done.